Laker fans, how we doing? My name is Sammy Long here with Hoops Talk. Tonight we're getting into a Lakers-Cavs preview. Early game tomorrow, 12.30 tip. I'm going to do three things today. I'm going to talk about what Cleveland does well, what they don't do well. I'm going to get into some positive news on the Jared Vanderbilt front. Hopefully he can return soon. Give a little update on that uh, later on. And then we're also going to get into where the Lakers stand. After a busy night in the Western Conference, a lot of moving parts. It's the best time of year with, with you know, in terms of every game matters, looking at seating, all this kind of stuff. Lakers got some help tonight, so it's getting real exciting and for Laker fans like we all are, and I'm getting to that a little bit later. But to start, Cleveland. Cleveland's a really good team. This is not a team to be taken lightly. They, they're they number three in the Eastern Conference right now. They come in around middle of the pack and scoring at 19th overall with 112.6 per game. But don't let that fool you. This team can score in bunches, starts and stops with Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell's a superstar. 26.8 points per game, five rebounds per game, six assists per game. Really does it all. He His first game back after a little bit of an injury was Phoenix last or a couple days ago. He's an excellent player. He's actually been linked to the Lakers in some possible offseason moves. There's The Athletics reported that the Lakers are going to look for a third star. Long been rumored Trey Young, kind of he maybe wants to get out of Atlanta. Donovan Mitchell is another guy that could, that could be looked to be moved. You know, the Cavs, they're a really good team, but they're, like, not a team that people take real seriously in the Eastern Conference, like a Boston. Milwaukee's in a little bit of a free fall, but still Milwaukee. And then, like, a Sixers if it beats healthy in, in the heat. They just don't really get talked about like that because people don't really believe in them. But uh, so people thought Donovan Mitchell might, might force his way out, which would be really interesting. The Lakers would love that, but that's offseason news. So we'll get into that later on. But, I mean, very good team. Donovan Mitchell, great. They're, they're middle of the pack in rebounding, which surprised me at 17th overall, 43.4 a game. This is surprising because Evan Mobley and Jared Allen are two really underrated players in this game. And Mobley's getting a lot of recognition, but Jared Allen really does a lot, does it all. He has 131.3 offensive rating. He has 120.1 defensive rating. He uh, Jared Allen averages 10.5 rebounds per game. Mobley averages 9.7. So this is a real good opportunity, I think, for Anthony Davis to continue building on the progress he's been making. I mean, you know, a month ago, we were sitting here talking about Nurkic bullied him. Sabonis has bullied him every single time they played. Jokic has bullied him every time. We started to see some signs. I mean, he's bullied Giannis twice and playing out of his mind recently. This is another game against a team that we don't see a lot to really make his mark. And not just scoring. I think rebounding is a big thing. Anthony Davis is an elite player. We all know this. But, you know, on the defensive end and rebounding, you know, be that rim protector that we all know that he can be and he's so good at. And then, you know, rebound the basketball. Guys like Nurkic and Sabonis really out-rebounded him on the glass in those games. And, and it seems like 80's put it behind him, but hopefully we continue that because they're going to need it tomorrow night because this team does rebound pretty well, despite what what maybe their their ranking overall is. Uh, they, they do share the ball well. They're 28.1 assists per game, which is eighth overall. It's a very well-rounded team. They've had some injuries over the course of the season, so numbers are a little skewed, but very good team. They, they lean in their bench a lot. Marcus Morris, Karis LeVert's really a star off the bench. He's He's been great for them. Uh, Sam Merrill, another guy. George Niang at Iowa State. Isaiah Mobley, Pete Nance. I mean, they go pretty deep in, the, in their bench. They, they, they've pretty, been a pretty good bench team all year. Ironically, the other game against Phoenix was, was really bad all around. It sucks. The Lakers could have used um, a victory by them to beat Phoenix. They only had 13 points off the bench. So I think this is an opportunity where the Lakers could really, you know, the bench – Played well in some games over the stretch. I got to give him some credit. Not maybe to what we'd like to see, but, you know, especially against the Raptors, Max Christie in a nice game, a couple guys like that. I like to see the bench continuing to build. Obviously, Gabe Vincent kind of getting his sea legs under him. And, and you know, keep Prince, I mean, Christie, guys like that. Dinwiddie had a, maybe a little bit of a rough road trip, but would like to see him. Guys keep building. This is a game, I think, where, they, where they're going up against a good bench, but has struggled recently. I'd like to see them outperform them. I think that'd be a real – encouraging point going into the playoffs if, if the bench starts outperforming other benches because we know the starting lineup for the Lakers outperforms almost all starting lineups in the, in, in the NBA. So getting my next point, Jared Vanderbilt. This is awesome. Er, news going to be reevaluated early next week. I mean, this Jared Vanderbilt could come back and Darvin Ham poured a little bit of cold water on it. He talked about there's not an exact return date, but if they're doing a reevaluation, it means they're close and they, there's a realistic chance that they think he can come back. I've said this multiple times over, over the course of the last couple of months. I think it was more important for Gabe Vincent to come back early 
because you know he's not only is a great defender, but he's he's a three point shooter. So you want to get him in a rhythm, kind of get the stroke back before you just throw him in a playoff game and say, hey, we need you to score 15, 20 points off the bench. That's a lot to ask. Vando, you don't have that prop. Vando is not, you know, they don't, they're not counting on him to be really an offensive contributor. Getting eight to ten points from, from Vando is like a dream. That's what you really want. I mean, if if he's getting in the eight to ten range, you're like, wow. I mean, the, the team's probably firing offensively. But, you know, he's just a defender. He's an elite defender. He takes the team's best offensive player and you know, guard. I mean, that's going to be crucial for the playoffs. And I think that defense is a lot of fundamentals and effort. He's a great rebounder as well. Effort. That's not something that you really need a long runway to, to get back in shape. As long as he's in shape, which, which you know, he appears like he is on the sideline. I mean, there, he's going to be just fine in, in his defensive prowess. I, I don't believe it will take a drop in the playoffs. As long as he can, kind of can get his minutes under him, I, I think he'll be fine. And But, th- again, this is the team that Palinka put together. This is the team that Palinka, you know, the Lakers got swept by the Nuggets last year. But all those games were close. There was not there was not blowouts in those games. You know, had LeBron not missed two threes at the end of the first game, had Jokic not made that insane um, shot over Anthony Davis at, at, at the, almost the half court line. I mean, these games could have gone on their ways. So you know, you take Bruce Brown off the Nuggets. I know they're still a great team. So you know, they're they're the favorites. They would be favored against the, the Lakers. So I'm not trying to get carried away here. But you take Bruce Brown, a guy who killed the Lakers, off the team. You had a guy like Gabe Vincent. You had a guy that's a three-point specialist off the bench. You have D'Angelo Russell playing at an extremely high level, something that he that wasn't there in the Nuggets. He, he wasn't good in that, in that series. You know, this is exciting. Um, this is the team that Polinka really envisioned going up in the Western Conference, and it seems like now we're going to finally start to see them all together, which hasn't really been the case for most of the year. Give you my next point. Where the Lakers stand in the Western Conference. Lakers got some serious help tonight. Pelicans lost. The Kings lost. The, the Lakers are actually tied. Oh, the Warriors lost as well. Which so the Lakers are two games ahead of the Warriors. The Kings and the Lakers have the same record. So you know, a, a month and a half ago, you thought, oh, the Kings, you know, they have the tiebreaker. They were like four games up at the time, something like that. But there's no way they're catching them. Kings are in a free fall. I mean, this Malik Monk and Herder injuries seem to really be get, taking a hit, and it makes sense. They're they're really good role players. You know, that'd be like that'd be like taking um they were arguably the third and fourth best players on the team. That'd be like taking D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves off the Lakers and being like, hey, go win a bunch of games. Probably not gonna happen. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not 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 gonna work. And obviously, you know, we don't wish for injuries or anything like that, but they're in a bit of a free fall. They're tied with the Lakers. They still got a tough schedule. They got an easy one against the Nets. Well, you'd think was easy on Sunday, but they, they got a couple more games. The Pelicans also in a free fall. Brandon Ingram injured, Zion. Uh, Injured kind of day to day, but you know, Zion's had a real rough injury history, so they're going to take that carefully. They're in a free fall as well. I mean, we're sitting in a position as of recording this video, it's halftime at the, the, the Suns T Wolves game. The Suns are actually up 16, so you know, we'll see. It's looking like they're going to win that game, but we'll see what we'll see what happens with that. It's, it's, uh, I mean, the Lakers are the Lakers are sitting pretty. This is why tomorrow is so crucial. Come out with energy. You're finally getting some help. You haven't got any help the last couple weeks from any of these teams. The Knicks helps you out beating the Kings. The Celtics helps you out. The Spurs come out with energy. Show why you're the biggest, the scariest team in the Western Conference right now. Besides, besides the Denver Nuggets, go be that down itself. Keep putting pressure on these teams. This is what happens when when you keep winning. Don't think – they can say all they want about other teams about how we don't look at the standings and we're just playing. It's BS. Everyone looks at the standings. Just like they say, I don't pay attention to what the media says. Every player is to pay attention to what the media says. Putting pressure on teams in front of you by continuing to win is – is this is what happens. You know, they're, they're, they they get tight. And you're, you're playing teams that you should beat. Or or in close games, you're going, oh, this team's right behind us. Then we have to go on the road, play two playing games. The Lakers might make the seven seed. I mean, I mean, it's crazy. You know, it, it sucks that the Suns seem to be coming in, into their own because they could get to the six. And who knows? I mean, you know, the Suns still have a tough schedule, but they seem to kind of be running through it right now because Booker and KD and Beal are just kind of on a different level. But, I mean, if the Lakers are the seven seed and they have two home games or, or one home game to win, and then if they lost, they get another home game, I feel very confident the Lakers are going to make the playoffs. I mean, very confident. And it'll be interesting to see what happens at the top. 
you know, the T-Wolves are down right now, so, so the Nuggets might move up in the, in the first. But, uh, you know, the Thunder lost tonight to the Pacers. So it'll be interesting to see what's up there. You know, it, it, if we get up to the seventh spot, then you hope Denver's the one seed because whoever's the eight seed's got, got to deal with them. If the, the, they fall back, it'd be great if they fell to the three where then they maybe had to face Phoenix in the first round. That'd be a hell of a series. I mean, you know, the Nuggets would be favored, but the, the Suns are going to get a couple games there and could really give them a run for their money. And that'd be great. You know, where the Lakers are playing the Thunder or T-Wolves, let, let the Nuggets get tired. Let, let them have to battle it out on the tough seven-game fought series. And you take you take one of those teams out. If it's Phoenix that goes out or Denver, that that, that you probably look around the conference and say probably – your other best competition there so really exciting lakers man just seem to be it's too early i don't want to get ahead of ourselves but they seem to be coming into that form that they were coming in last year and they just they're just playing with they're just they're playing loose i saw a quote from d talking about how it's like they're having fun and it's translating to wins you can see that you can just see it on the court you can see and they seem like they're having a good time and you know five and one on a road trip will do that to you so hopefully they come out it's gonna be rocking Saturday, Saturday, midday in LA, come out and get the W and we will see you guys on the post game show tomorrow night. Please tune in. Please like, and subscribe. Al will be taking it from there. And, uh, and I'll be in the background doing, doing comments. So thank you guys. Please, please subscribe to the channel and uh, go Lakers.